Okay, we're back and it's been actually a remarkably busy week for June. Normally we're going dead quiet at this point. As soon as farmers start cutting silage and shearing sheep, they tend to forget the vet. And also, to be honest, the cattle and sheep at this point are more or less looking after themselves from a health point of view. You know, this is a quieter time of year. Yes, people will be dosing sheep um, with various bits and bobs as preventatives. That keeps them busy, but we do the odd bit of troubleshooting. People are just busy at this point and, and the livestock are pretty much taking care of themselves. So what have I done this week? Clearing up the odd bit of bull testing. Uh, last few carvings are still dribbling in. I did some MV bloods um, randomly. So just a flock screen for that. Well, routine periodic blood test. And of all things, a tibial neurectomy. And having done, I think it was two in about five years, we've done another two in the past three months. So there you go, just like buses. But you've seen me do those things before, so I'll just stick the links to those videos in the description. Didn't want to repeat myself really, because, yeah, like I say, you may well have seen them before. Instead, it's actually been a while since I've done what I rather grandly term um, a technical video. So uh, it's technical with a little T for sure. Um, I thought I'd get out of the house though, because it is a nice-ish day. I know, I know these are perhaps a little less interesting for people who aren't in agriculture, but um, a lot of you guys who do watch are farmers or vets or people working in the sector. So today I'm going to do a very quick take. It's just my take, can't deputise for the entire profession, uh, on herbal lays. And so the plot I'm standing at the moment is actually a herbal lay. I think it's and um, what would be termed a GS4. I'm not a land agent, I'm not an agronomist. So I'm not here to sort of talk on that sort of thing. But you can see, it isn't just grass, right? There's, it's been grazed pretty hard, this, uh, Ollie said. So um, it's not perhaps looking at its most diverse, but this is the point where it gets the rest over the summer. But the long and short of this is, there have been some fairly, whether we call them generous or well incentivized um, schemes uh, in terms of stewardship, and sustainable farming incentive in the UK to get farmers putting these mixes in, i.e. not just your good old-fashioned um, sort of rye grass and clover. Try and build a bit of soil health, a bit of a diversity, better for pollinators and so on. And again, I'm not a land agent. I can't claim to understand the, uh, the intricacies of all the different schemes. All I know is there are more people putting them in and using them and grazing them and this is where the vet sort of enters the fray because I'll give you a really increasingly common scenario. So a farmer puts a fair acreage of this sort of mix in or any herbal mix really. And the week before or the day before or the morning of the day they graze it, they look at it, they got on the phone to us and say, Kaz, I've got this, uh, this herbal mix. Um, will it be all right to graze? And that's the point I go, well, it depends. And that sounds like such a veterinary sort of cop-out, but just like any machine you put information into to get a decision, the quality of the decision depends on the quality of information. Now, why do I say it depends? Because really when we say a herbal mix, literally all we're saying is a mix that's got herbs in it. It's a mix of herbs and probably some grasses and some legumes as well. So for example, this, we've clearly got lots of grasses here, but we've got uh, plantain there with the rib leaves and this sort of funny looking uh, conical flower. Got some clover in there. Uh, I'm not much of a botanist, sorry guys. I'm pretty sure that's just a dock. I don't think that's in the mix, but hey-ho. Um, and I'm looking for some chicory. There is some chicory. I think that's chicory, I think. Correct me if you think I'm wrong, but you get my drift that there are many different plants in here. And whether it's safe to graze, how animals are gonna perform on it, uh, sort of depends on what they're actually eating. When a farmer says, oh, I've got a mix, really that's like saying, um, I've made a pie. You don't know whether that's a sweet pie, a savory pie, is it apple, is it cherry, is it shepherd's, is it oxtail? Really, it's not a very descriptive term. And so the more information you can give us, the better. And getting right down into the detail, so not just giving us a, a seed mix, I'll tell you what was brilliant, just a photo or a video walking through the mix of what's actually there because there's a good old-fashioned sort of dairy nutritional um, idiom where they talk about on the dairy farm there being three rations. There's a ration the farmer's formulated with a nutritionist, 
there's the ration that the cows are actually fed and then there's a the ration the cows actually eat because cattle are notorious for actually sorting out the sweeties from the uh, rubbish hence the popularity of tmrs and therein lies the rub because if we take that analogy and then apply it to a herbal lay there are some commonalities so yes the farmer will put in a seed mix but in different fields and in different years different levels of each seed and therefore each plant are going to get established and after that they're probably going to be grazed differently depending on a the livestock in there sheep tend to be a bit more selective than cattle and whether they are rotationally grazing it versus set stocking it and then we have to remember these plant communities are dynamic what is here in the first year probably isn't going to be here in exactly the same proportion the following year and then the year after that in fact some of these sort of herbs and um and legumes we know livestock graze them preferentially and therefore it's not uncommon for a herbal mix like this to end up basically just being grass um, after a year or two so you can see how it's very hard to make generalizations about how animals are going to graze and perform on a herbal mix and the same can be said for a cover crop again could be dozens and dozens of different things and different combinations um, even brassicas which often are single species stands they can behave remarkably differently depending on the weather depending on the environment how well they've grown what's been frosted off or not so again it really does come down to a sort of paddock by paddock assessment and you will have seen me we've done several videos on different things which could be called uh, herbal mixes uh, so for example you saw me talking to Fraser in New Zealand about grazing a plantain and kale mix kale wasn't really a herb it's a brassica um, but the plantain certainly is uh, and then we've done we've done others on top of that we've talked about red clover which is a, a legume um, we've talked about GS4 in fact with uh, Jack and Allison as for the different plants um, we've got all sorts of different things to contend with some and this is more cover some and this is more of a cover crop thing than a, a herbal mix aren't very palatable so uh phacelia buckwheat sheep don't really enjoy um if there's heaps of red clover in it we might be saying right that's gonna be real rocket fuel um but then also there's a risk of bloat uh, and potentially um some issues with uh you fertility if you're using it around tupping um what else we've got uh, chicory is a really good one lamb seems to do fantastically on it and then it also has this sort of much touted uh, anthelmintic effect so anti-worm effect where people have documented that uh, it's often by squirting a bit of chicory extract onto a worm in a lab now whether grazing chicory in lambs has the same effect I don't know it may well but I think we ought to handle that with caution I think herbal lays often do really well for lambs because they're they're pretty fresh like any sort of new reseed by the time you come to graze them at least for the first time you've buried any previous worm eggs they're, they're a fresh reseed and so that's the sort of confounding factor there so have we got a nice takeaway message i think the main thing is to recognize that herbal mixes cover crops they're all different looking in an ideal world run by vets uh, a farmer would ring us up and say hey oh, look i'm thinking about putting this um mix in uh, what do you think um that would be awesome now i think that would be fairly optimistic um, because farmers are busy people and ultimately a lot of the schemes dictate what has to go in and you know can be fairly prescriptive more realistically perhaps before grazing it and well before not the morning of um, just giving us a ring and walk perhaps doing a walkthrough it's fantastic the mobile phone like how it's revolutionized veterinary practice just walking through and saying hey this is what it's looking like at the moment any tips you know should you strip graze it should you be providing extra fiber um, is there anything you need to know in general i think herbal is going to be a really good thing you know farmers are at the moment fairly well rewarded for putting them in as far as i'm aware they're pretty good for the soil and um like i say generally parasite pressure i think is low more or less because they're fresh reseeds they can even and this is anecdotal Sort of provide trace elements that might be missing in a sort of straight ryegrass and white clover um, stand for example i've spoken to uh, a farmer down in durham used to have to um, bolus all of his uh, hogs since he started you know that's when they're on a traditional sort of 
I don't know whether it was permanent pasture. I suspect it was sort of a ray grass and white, and white clover. Since grazing them on a uh, herbal lay, and he's tested the sheep to, to confirm this, managed to get away with not bolusing them because they didn't need it. Um, so again, that can be a really good thing. I'm not one for generality, so I'd always verify, you know, trust but verify your decisions. You know, these are important decisions you're making with ramifications that might last not months, but years uh, on your business and your family. Like I say, herbal lays, my take is, they should be a really good thing. And often they will be. It's just about avoiding those odd pitfalls, talking to your vet ahead of time. And yes, I know you're probably gonna be talking to your agent and your agronomist to work out the finer details. But even if it's just a cursory, hey, what do you think of this? Video, photo. Look, that is what we're here for. We're here to prevent issues. We'd much rather that than uh, come out later in the year to some, whether it's suddenly dead animals from bloat or lambs that just aren't performing very well. Um, whatever it ends up being, an ounce of prevention uh, is worth a ton of cure. So hopefully that is a nice, short, crisp video. It's getting to the summer now when we will get a bit quiet. So I will have to be a bit creative um, about what we're doing. If anyone's got any suggestions for people or places to visit who you think would make an interesting video, just let me know because um, we're always up for a bit of a road trip here. Otherwise, have a good week and I will see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.